Jed Hoyer spent yet another week, uh, his media blitz, tap dancing around that very word, rebuild. <laughs> Anything he could possibly do not to say the word rebuild. And I've already done segments on this, so I won't beat that too, too further into the ground. But, uh, you know, beyond that, the, the Cubs actually beat the Cardinals this weekend, which I is saw that. kind of bizarre. It's they just, split the series, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, two games to one. So, oh, no, I thought it was a four game series. I'm sorry, it was two games to one. They won the series. I think it was two games oh. to one. I honestly, all the Cubs games are on at the same time of the Tigers game, which is driving me crazy considering they're in different different time zones. So, I I, I kind of lost track of the Cubs this weekend with everything going on with the Tigers. So, it was uh, I don't know. It was uh, interesting that they could. I, no one saw a series win over the Cardinals coming. Um, or even a split, whatever it was, but uh, baseball is just fucking weird. That's the only way it, I can explain it that one. Is, it is unpredictable. Because the Cubs came back last night and lost immediately at home to the Cincinnati Reds, one of the worst teams in the league, who has actually been playing quite well recently. So maybe that explains it. But, but none of that really matters uh, when, when it comes down to the Cubs. What really matters with the Cubs is revenue streams. Oh, yeah. We've learned over and over again uh, in the last three years, at least, how money rules everything with the Cubs. The on-field product is not what matters. It matters how much revenue is coming in to this ballpark and this this organization uh, with the start of the marquee network, uh, various enterprises, the expansion of all of their concerts every summer, uh, and, of course, this latest – DraftKings Sportsbook, which construction started a f- several weeks ago, maybe months ago. There's there's a skeleton, steel skeleton built. But this week, uh, there was a ceremonial signing of a beam. That was a PR event uh, crafted essentially by and for Crane Kenny, the dreaded Crane Kenny, president of business operations, to spew his pro- propaganda and divert attention away from how shitty the product is on the field. As last week's episode uh, was titled, this is the worst Cubs team that has ever lived uh, with the last 162 games be only having 58 wins would be the worst 162 game stretch in Cubs history for a franchise known for futility. This is the worst. Uh, it was well-timed and just kind of a strange media event. Yeah, I've heard of, you know, the dedication ceremonies, like yeah. the ceremonial shovel, you know, the first shovel for a project. Uh, Maybe in this case, you go ahead and place a bet. Yeah. Maybe a first bet. <laughs> first bet. Even though it's a, even though it's a shell. Uh, but... That's coming up after after it's done. I'm sure they'll have the ceremonial first bet. Uh, but yeah, this is the ceremonial signing of a beam. Uh, apparently it was the only time, maybe it was the only time that they could uh, have Crane Kenny and uh, DraftKings CEO Jason Robbins' schedules match up where they could be at the corner of Sheffield and Addison to go through this bullshit. But they signed the beam, whatever that means, that was done. But really, it was, uh, like I said, it was a, it was a media tour for Crane Kenny uh, to talk, to keep espousing the virtues of the Tom Ricketts family, uh, how they continue to say every penny they make with baseball and all these ancillary operations on the premises, including those concerts, including this new DraftKings Sportsbook, all that money goes back into the baseball operations department. They don't spend like it. Well, that's the question. And it's funny, and I'm not sure if this was by design or if Crane Kenny finally stepped in it, uh, because he specifically is quoted as saying, the business operations department has given Jed Hoyer all the money he needs. They're, the purse strings are not being cinched up on him. Jed Hoyler m- merely chose not to spend money this offseason. Whoa, throwing that boy under the bus. I can't believe that he would just say that, but I mean, there's my conspiracy theory part of it. You know, that that has to be talked about. There's no way he could just throw his GM under the bus like that. But, you know, maybe it's part of their concerted effort to, to try to help fans think about the future and how we're going to have even money from this year. We didn't spend that we can add on to what we're, what we have for next year's budget and can spend like crazy. I, I don't know if that's the strategy now, but it is kind of curious because I had the same reaction you just did that he, he's kind of, 
kind of tried to draw a line between the business operations and the baseball operations departments, uh, where it's like, you know, I've been railing against Tom Ricketts for not spending. I'm wearing my Ricketsville t-shirt right now, home of biblical losses that I've been bashing him for three years almost now on. And I wonder if, you know, the business operations and Ricketts are starting to feel it a bit and trying to get, you know, maybe some truth out there that Jed Hoyer just chose not to spend. For, for strategic reasons. Uh, I don't know. I just, it just seemed kind of strange to have to see, hear. And first of all, Crane Kenny needs to never talk again. I think yeah, I've been he, on record he, many times because yeah, there's good. no reason to believe a fucking word he ever has to say. I'm not sure why any business manager ever talks to the public. Uh, usually it's, you know, the GM or the president or the marketing department talks to, you know, Brooks, Brooks Bollinger, Brooks Brooke Boyer. Boyer. Brooks Boyer. Yeah. You hear from him all the time. That's fine. He's, the, he's your marketing director. That's what that's his job. You hear from my Tom. future job. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. Uh, you hear you don't hear from business ops department presidents. You know, so I, I just wonder if we'll might even be hearing less if that was actually Crane speaking out of out of turn, trying to trying to get some heat off of the business department. Uh that the money is there. It's just the baseball ops decided not to, not to spend it. Yeah. I mean, whether, whether that's the case or not, you don't say it. <laughs> you just don't I, say it. Yeah. I don't, I'm, it I, hasn't I don't, created much controversy in Chicago. So I, I haven't seen tons of articles written about that comment. So maybe I'm probably just blowing things out of a, out of proportion. Cause I, maybe we I'm already like, knew, maybe we already knew that, but you and I just never read about it or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe it's already yeah, been out good. there that, you know, the Cubs chose. Well, I guess, I guess maybe it's not a big deal because we all know the Cubs have money and they just didn't spend it. So yeah, maybe it's, that's I guess, why. I guess the it, truth, it, the yeah. truth is self-evident. We always knew they chose yeah. not. That's what I've been saying this whole time. We know yeah. they have money. So maybe it's just not, not, not newsworthy, but yeah. I just, I don't know. I just thought the way Crane Kenny phrased it just kind of felt like he was almost trying to distance himself from. Yeah. Where. I mean, yeah, I agree with that. I, it feels like he's just like, eh, I know I gave that guy everything I was supposed to budget wise. <laughs> and you know, he chose not to spend it. So Anyway, well, there are, can we can we talk about the Def Leppard show coming up this weekend? There's still tickets available. <laughs> well, and that's specific, specifically what he did with this uh, DraftKings sports book. He went through all the details, uh, the 22,000 foot facility, uh, three story facility with a 2,000 square foot television. Uh, the wow, the details of the deal, at least with DraftKings, was that it's a hundred million dollar sponsorship call it the DraftKings Sportsbook over 10 years. So it's 10 million a year. Wow. But the way you know, it's kind of murky with sports books being on the property of a sports franchise. You know, yes. Obviously there are rules about gambling. Well, I don't think you can bet baseball. on the Cubs there. You can't bet on the Cubs probably. Well, I, I'm sure you can. Uh, they're, they're distancing themselves a bit in, in several ways. Uh, first of all, the way Crane Kenny Cl uh, classified their relationship with this facility and DraftKings is they're merely a landlord. They own the building, but DraftKings is the owner operator of the, of the business. And the Cubs get no revenues from the gambling that happens there. The only, the only revenues they get are from this $10 million or this hundred million dollar mm. deal yeah. with DraftKings. Which okay. I think they have to say, right. I think, I think, it, I don't know. I'm not a business law or gambling expert, but. I think it's probably 100% illegal for the Cubs to be making money on, on gambling on their own, on their own sport. So um, if not, it leads to some murky areas, at least to, where you can get into some strange, strange uh, situations. But the other, the other news, or at least news to me is that uh, fans attending the game that day, while the sports yeah. book will be open as just any other sports bar in, in Wrigleyville, fans will not be allowed at, uh, access in and out of the ballpark from the sports book. So you can't just be in your bleacher seat and go into the, go into the sports book to gamble for a while and then go back. So essentially it, it's going to be just like any other sports bar, the sports corner right across the street or a cubby bear or anything like that. You, that is separate from the game day experience. So there's no, so I think I know I thought when it was first announced and I actually thought this counter was already open. So I had no idea. 
but it's going to be open uh, by I think they said end of second quarter or second quarter next year, which okay is probably going to be opening day next year. That's, yeah, I'm sure that's what they're shooting for. Um, but so there's no way, like if you're in the concourse, nope. you could just turn around. You can go up to this counter and make a bet. No, it'd be just like leaving you. If you tried to go to the sports book, it would just be like trying to go to the sports corner. You wouldn't be right. able to just come right back in. So there's, yeah, there's no doorway on mm -hmm. within the field. It's all, nope. it's all external. And I have, the, I have a feeling that is all part of this legal, legal yeah. separation that I kind of touched on, but I don't, I don't know a whole lot about. Um, but I think that's why, how they're trying to create the separation, how they can get away with having a sports book on, on the corner of Sheffield and Addison. So. So interesting things again. I mean, the, the 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 political intrigue, the the gambling side of things, the marketing side of things, the money side of things are far more intriguing with the Cubs than anything on the field these days. So that's where I'm going to focus. Right now. Word Hole Media.